do pass it on. There was once a boy who liked doing kind things, and whenever people said to him, It's kind of you to help me. Now what can I do for you in return? What do you think he said to them? He said, Oh, do pass it on. I don't want anything in return. Just pass my bit of kindness on to somebody else. That's what my mother said we should do if people are good to us. Pass it on. Well, that was a funny thing to say, but it was a very good idea. And now, just listen to what happened to a bit of kindness that was passed on. Harry, the boy who began the bit of kindness, helped the old apple woman to pick up the apples that fell out of her basket one morning. The old dame tripped over the curb and down she went with her apples all over the road. Dear, dear, she was so upset. But along came Harry, helped her up, pick up all the apples, polished them with a clean handkerchief and set them neatly back into the basket. You're a kind lad, said the old apple woman. What can I do to repay you for your kindness? Will you have an apple? No, thank you, said Harry. Just pass my bit of kindness on, will you? And off he went. Very well, thought the apple woman. I'll pass that bit of kindness on. I'll just wait and see how can I do it. So down the road she went with her load and very soon she came to where a woman was hanging out clothes on her line. Just as the apple woman went by, the wind took hold of a pillowcase and blew it over the hatch. It was almost in the mud. The apple woman ran to it and caught it before it got dirty. The washerwoman was so grateful. That's kind of you, she said. Very kind indeed. Do pass it on then, said the apple woman, pleased. You pass on that bit of kindness and don't forget. So the washerwoman thought about it and watched for a chance to pass it on. And very soon her chance came. A little girl came down the road crying. The washerwoman called out to her. What's the matter, little girl? Oh, I've been home, but my mother's out and I can't get any tea, wept the little girl. And I'm so hungry. Poor child, said the washerwoman. Come along in and I'll give you some bread and jam. I've got a bit of kindness to pass on today. So the child sat down and ate a great piece of bread and jam. You are very kind, she said shyly. I wish I could give you back some bread and some jam. I don't want it, child, said the washerwoman. Just pass the bit of kindness on. Now don't forget. Do pass it on. The little girl ran off, pleased. She thought it was a funny idea to pass a bit of kindness on, but she made up her mind that she would. Her chance soon came. She passed a cottage where Mrs. Kelly lived with all her children and saw poor Mrs. Kelly at the door looking very worried. What's the matter? asked the little girl. Oh, I heard my Johnny's falling down in the next street and his leg hurts so much he can walk home, said Mrs. Kelly. I want to go and fetch him, but I daren't leave the other children alone in the house. They're so little. Well, I've got a bit of kindness to pass on, said the little girl. I'll mind them for you, Mrs. Kelly. So Mrs. Kelly ran off to fetch Johnny and the little girl minded the children and played with them. When Mrs. Kelly came back with Johnny, she was very grateful. I'll give you a penny for your kindness, but I haven't one to spare, she said. Oh, I don't want any payment, said the little girl. But Mrs. Kelly, do pass it on. Pass what on, said Mrs. Kelly in great surprise. 
My bit of kindness, said the little girl, laughing, and she ran home. Well, Mrs. Kelly thought she certainly would pass it on, and she kept her eyes open to see how she could do it. She didn't have to wait very long. When she passed the park gates with her children, she saw the park keeper looking very miserable indeed. What's the matter, park keeper, she said. Is your wife ill or something? Oh no, said the man, but I forgot to bring my tea with me this afternoon and I'm cold. I wish I had a drop of hot tea to warm me up. Oh, I'll send my Bobby to fetch it for you, said Mrs. Kelly at once. He knows where your house is. Thanks very much, said the park keeper. It's very, very kind of you. Anything I can do for you by any chance? No, said Mrs. Kelly. Just pass it on, that's all. The park keeper laughed. He promised he would, but he couldn't seem to think what to do. When six o'clock came, he rang the bell for everyone to go out of the park and soon it was empty. He locked the gate behind him and he went on his way home down by the park railings. And just by the railings he saw a little boy looking upset. It was Harry, the one who began the story of passing on. What's up, Harry? asked the keeper. My best ball's gone over the railings, said Harry. I'm afraid someone else will find it in the morning, that I shan't have it any more. The keeper remembered the bit of kindness he had to pass on. I'll go back to the park gates and unlock them for you, he said. Then you can slip in and get your ball. What about that, said the keeper. Oh, I said that is nice of you, said Harry, delighted. But aren't you on your way home? Oh, that doesn't matter, said the keeper. I have got a bit of kindness to pass on, so perhaps this will do. And back he went and unlocked the gates for Harry. Harry got his ball and thanked the keeper. Now... Just you pass that bit of kindness on, said the keeper, smiling. Well, wasn't it strange how Harry's own bit of kindness came back to him? He's busy passing it on again, and it may come to you this time. Do pass it on, won't you? The End